Okay guys, so today's video idea came to me because, because one of my clients, uh, Jordan Prater, he brought this up to me. And this was one of those things that was tough to diagnose by looking at video footage. Um, so basically, he had been having some inconsistencies with his squat. He's getting ready for a meet in the next uh, in the next few weeks. And he said, you know, maybe I should try to stop breaking at my hips on the way down. And I was like, holy smokes, I had no clue you were trying to break at your hips on, on your squats. And this goes for high or low bar, I had no idea. I was like, you know, stop doing that immediately. It's like the worst cue in the game. It's one of the worst cues. It's probably the worst cue as far as squats are concerned. I was like, stop doing that, break at the knees, just go straight down on low bar or high bar. I don't care if it's high or low bar, go straight down. Break at the knees, that's all I want you to think about. Be explosive. He changes this, and in one session, his squat looks 10 times more explosive, 100 times better, and I'm just like, it didn't even occur to me that this is something probably a lot of guys try to do, um, and this is one of those things that was popularized by Mark Ripito especially on low bar squat and by like west side barbell and such where it's like you got to break at the hips with with low bar and sit back in the squat and i personally from what i've seen my experiences with squatting heavy over the years you know squatting upwards of 350 kilos in sleeves and like training a thousand clients breaking at the hips is the worst cue out there for squat like no one should ever use this no one should ever think about this um, high or low bar, it's just an awful cue. It's one of those things that's gonna overcomplicate the lift and make you worse. It's gonna make you squat worse, you're gonna be slower, it's gonna just throw the mechanics of the entire lift off. Uh, really, one thing I like to say too as well that kind of ties into this point is, don't think of low bar and high bar as different mechanics or different form. The form should be the same. It should be the exact same thought process. The only differentiation should be in bar placement. So high and low bar, the only difference I want you guys to think about is where are you placing the bar prior to unracking it? The, the bar position, and this is something a lot of guys don't do properly. They, they go too high with low bar to where it's a mid bar squat. The bar needs to be lower than you think as a general rule of thumb. So anytime you're trying to acclimate to low bar, Think to yourself, the main thing to think about with the bar placement is it should be lower than I even think it should be. Like initially everyone makes this mistake when starting out with low bar, where they go a little lower than high bar to where they're in a mid bar spot and they think that's low bar. But then they'll get to their max weights and they'll get pitched over, their chest will cave forward, the bar will roll up their back and that's because it's not a true low bar position. But if you find that true low bar position where you're lower than you probably think you should be, you will not get pitched over. You will not have the bar roll up your back. You will have much stronger leverages overall. That's where you need to be. So that's kind of a side note. But this whole breaking at the hips thing is awful and needs to stop. There, it, it, Nothing changes. Once the bar is in a different spot on your setup on squat, high or low bar, nothing changes. You have the same stance as you would high or low bar. Same stance. And the stance is going to be dependent on the length of the femur and where the hips attach, the hip socket attachment site. If the hip socket attachment site is more laterally on the outside of the, uh, on the, outside of the leg, that's gonna mean you're gonna have to have, take a wider stance with your, your toes pointed out at a greater angle. Now I would never angle the toes out further than 30 degrees on a squat, but that's why some guys have to squat wider while some guys do better narrow. So that's just dependent on structure. But at the same time, higher low bar, same stance, the only thing differentiated is the bar placement and break at the knees. Don't even think about breaking at the knees. Just go down. Just go down normal. Try to be explosive. The, the biggest cue you guys should be thinking about with squat is to be explosive. No matter what the weight is, you have the bar on your back. You have 135, one plate per side on your back, 60 kg. You should be trying to explode through that weight as if... It's the, as, as if it's 220 kg, as if it's 485, 495. There should be no difference there. You should be trying to throw that bar through the ceiling. The explosiveness needs to be there right from the first warm up all the way up to your working set. That's how you're gonna lift the most. So there's no, no place for slow tempo, slow lifting. That's not a thing. I want you to, to descend controlled, 
but quick enough to where you get a good rebound out of the bottom and explode up. That should happen with 60 kilos. That should happen with 100 kilos, 140 kilos, 180, and so on, 220. You should always be exploding up. That needs to be the thought process. But breaking at the hips, throw it out the window. It's an awful cue. There's no difference in the form from high to low bar. The difference is in the bar placement. And after you unrack the bar, everything goes back to where it would be normally. It's, it's all the same. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. I appreciate you all. And uh, we'll see if uh, the video editor process gets, uh, gets going in the next couple of days. We'll see what's, what's in store coming up. So thank you guys.